Welcome everyone to, uh, actually it's my first class in a couple of months as I was talking about earlier before I started recording. Um, you know, I've been in and out for the last uh, couple of months. So this is actually my first uh, class and uh, this is going to be on iOS 17. So I'm going to focus on the iPad, but in, uh, in most cases what I'm going to show you will work across on the iPad and the um, on the Mac as well. And I'm going to have subsequent presentations on those too. I did mention earlier um, what somebody asked me what I thought of iOS 17 and I am very uh, impressed with the stability of it and actually I do like that they didn't add a ton of features to it. Um, I'm going to be honest the watch OS and I'll have a class on that as well that one I'm still getting used to. They did make some big changes with um, with watchOS, so that one I'm getting a little comfortable, trying to get comfortable with it. You know, it's just muscle memory how you use the Apple Watch, and uh, so look for a presentation on that later on. Um, but with the, back on the uh, iPhone, the iPhone is really uh, or iOS 17. Not a lot of features. Usually what they will do, what Apple will tout, is you know hundreds of features, over a hundred features. And in this uh, in this case here, iOS 17, I don't think they even mentioned it on their marketing marketing page how many new features. Because technically they might have over a hundred features, but really it's there's not that many new features. But what they did add was really nice. And, like I said, it is cross-platform, so most of everything that you're going to see here, and I'll try to point that out, most of everything you're going to see here is uh, um, compatible with the uh, iPad and the Mac as well, so most of the features. So, I do like it. I like that they didn't do a whole lot with it, and uh, I'd like to see them do this more often, like go every other year, or, you know, a slower pace and get things right, because um, it has been very stable for me. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I, I think there was about 56 people that signed up for this, so a pretty good, uh, pretty good group here. Um, I'll just quickly go over who I am, and, um, just a little introduction. So uh, um, people that know me, which most of you do, um, uh, you can just go get a glass of water, coffee, a beer, whatever. Um, but I'm Dan from Dan's Tutorials. I create uh, video tutorials uh, for the Mac, iPad, iPhone, Apple Watch, and Apple TV. And you can find most of these videos, actually all, yeah, all of these videos on my site, Dan's Tutorials, not Dan's Tutorials, but it's Dan's Tutorials. And then I also have a, uh, a YouTube presence as well. I have about probably 3,000 videos on my site. You know, some of them are getting pretty old, but Apple doesn't change some things. Some things don't need to be changed at all. But on the YouTube channel, I have about three to 400. So, you know, my site has a lot more to offer. It is a membership-based site. So um, if you like what you see, um, all I ask is that uh, you help support. It is a single, you know, small business. It's just me. Um, and, uh, you know, you're supporting, supporting small business by helping to support uh, by buying a membership. And you can save 25% on any membership just by using, and I'll have it at the end of the thing as well, but save 25, and it applies to any of the, um, any of the uh, subscriptions that I have. So um, that's a little bit about me. All right, so let's, uh, let's get started with uh, what, uh, what I'm going to call some of my favorite features with iOS 17. Um, and basically, like I said, this is going to be for the iPhone. The first thing that we're going to look at is interactive widgets. So now when we are looking at our iPhone here, if we have widgets on there, let's go ahead and add a reminders widget in here. Reminders is a perfect example of what I mean by interactive. So I just go up to the plus and we're going to go and add a reminders widget. And you see this pretty much hasn't changed. I mean, I think they cleaned up this list a little bit. Um, we're going to go with, um, let's just go with the inbox here, add the widget. And what I need to do is, I don't have any reminders in there, so I need to uh, change this where it shows me some of my reminders. So I'm just going to go to Edit Widget. Again, nothing new here, but if you didn't know that you could change what it is, you just tap and hold and then you can edit that widget. And from here, what we do is, we let's just go to Grocery Items. That's a good one. 
So we have grocery items there. I'm at the store, and what, um, what I'm doing is I'm shopping. So I just picked up hot dogs. Well, in older versions of, a, of iOS, with iOS 16 and older, when you tapped on this widget, what it would do is it would open up the Reminders app, and then you'd go to the Reminders app, and then you'd have to go and tap to mark it as complete. And that works, and you can see it still works that way, but all I want to do is just mark hot dogs off. I've got hot dogs. Well, if you just tap on hot dogs here, you're going to see that. It marks it as complete, and then it disappears. So now I'm over uh, looking at ham. I'm in the meat department, so I need to pick up some ham. Tap on ham, and then it disappears. Tap on cheese. I'm in the dairy department. It disappears. And again, I can tap anywhere outside of where this interactivity is, and it does open up into the Reminders app. So you can still do that. Just don't tap on anything that is complete. And this works across multiple, um, you know, if there's any type of interactivity with, uh, with an app, you can now just, uh, just mark it as complete or whatever, snooze a calendar item, anything like that, without actually having to open up the app. So I think that is a really nice addition, and it just streamlines things. You know, it just makes things more efficient. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm at the grocery store, and theoretically, if I had this running on my Mac at home, but I'm, you know, I don't have a wife anymore, but if I, I had my significant other were at home, could she literally add to the grocery list and I would see it immediately? Yep. She would. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And like I say, basically, I'm all about, some of you know that I like to automate stuff, you know, when you're doing, when you're a single business owner, um, with a little help from your wife, um, it, uh, you need to automate things. Otherwise, you just get stuck doing, you know, so if you can take two or three steps out of something, to me, that's a, that's a bonus. And I remember an old story. Some of you might have heard this before, too. This is back with um, Palm Pilot. Remember the old Palm Pilot, which ruined my handwriting. I still say to this day, it ruined my handwriting. Um, but with the Palm Pilot, what uh, what they they actually had a team that their goal was to reduce a step whenever you did something. They just wanted to take one or two steps out to do something. Their their whole thing was to try to make it efficient, and this kind of fits right into that. You know, why should we do five steps when we can do it in two or anything like that? So this widget thing here is really, really nice. Now I see that um, Ross also mentioned um, grocery items and, and lists, and I'll talk about that shortly, but yes, you can add sections to this as well, and I really like that as well. So that's um, interactivity with uh, the um, widgets. So now let's take a look at another one that I use on a, uh, on a nightly basis. And when I say nightly, that's because uh, landscape mode. Stand by when it's in landscape mode. So what we are able to do with our iPad now, when we uh, put it on a charger and then we rotate it, what it will do is it will go into a special mode um, and basically just show you a giant clock. It could show you the weather. Let's um, see what I mean. So I have a special screen here. Now, of course, it's not. I'm going to rotate my phone here. Of course, it's not. There it goes. So there is landscape mode. And this is just regular widgets. I can actually swipe through here and change these around. If I tap and hold, I'm able to change the widgets, what is showing there. There's my calendar. So you can actually go and adjust this. So this is basically what I have on my nightstand. I, I have, let's go and take a look at this uh, with an overview here. Um, you're going to see that. My phone is just sitting here. Now this is not a magnetic um, a, a charger, but on my nightstand with my real phone, it is a magnetic charger and it's charging the phone and it puts it into a, a nice, um, nice landscape mode. It turns it a nice red like what we've seen on the, uh, for those of you have seen the ultimate Apple Watch where at night you can get it a nice red so it's not blaring in your face. This will also do that as well. Now it's uh, five o'clock over here so it's not red, but it um, still looks uh, pretty good. It's, uh, See here, so yeah. 
So basically, like I said, you can just kind of swipe. So when I wake up in the morning, I can just see what the weather is and see what the uh, what the time is just by looking at that. I sometimes I do have to tap. You know how you can tap it. It uses that uh, um, accelerometer there to wake it up. But uh, that's the landscape mode, and all you have to do is just rotate it again. So when I go back up here, what it's going to do is go back into the regular mode, and now it's in the regular mode. And now I just go and rotate it. We'll just go with, uh, we'll look at it on the face cam here. So I'll just go like this, put it down, and you're going to see when I wake it up here, you can see it there, and there it goes. It knows that's in landscape mode. So I think that's um, really nice. Yeah. I'm just asking if it's for work on a 13, is there, will this work on any iPhone that can handle uh, 17? That's a good question. Um, let's see if I can find that out real quick. So we're just going to go here. Uh, Apple iOS 17 requirements. You can see it on my Mac here. Just type it in here. Can't spell requirements, but that's all right. Um, Apple requires a 2018 or newer phone. So I don't know if that's the 13 or not. It's going to be down at the very bottom yeah, here. Up here. I yeah. I read that it does work on older phones, but it doesn't persist. Only the newest hardware, the standby mode, will persist all night. Yes. It will not. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so you're going to see that there's a bunch of different thing, you know, limitations. iPhone 12, iPhone 12, um, and I don't know what these are. iPhone 12 Pro Max, iPhone 13. So you, uh, I don't know exactly where that landscape fits in there, but yeah, uh, it sounds like it will to a certain degree. I have a 12 Pro Max. Where do I enable this? Do I go into the control panel? That is... So uh, if we go back over to my phone here and we go to settings, it is under, I believe, display and brighten. Nope. Let's see here. I know there is a um, setting in here. Standby. Right, the right there. They actually have a new setting called standby. Okay. And then from there, you can kind of set what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. And where are the widgets? What's that? Where are the widgets? The widgets, uh, you just, when you're at the home screen, all you have to do is just tap and hold. And then you're going to see the plus at the very top left. And there's your widgets. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, all right. So that is uh, the new landscape mode. I use that every night um, because it's just, it just works nice. Uh, because we also have an old digital clock that is across our bed and uh, you know we have a cat and sometimes the cat's blocking that view and now I got this you know it's just like a nice clock not too bright just sits there works great so uh, I really like that uh, that feature as well all right now we're going to get into the uh, the grocery list and sections so um, let's see here Ross asked about this uh, new feature grocery list, how it sorts items and all that is uh, is really good. And it is. It's really, it, it really, well, let's just go and do it. Because I think uh, it's, it's basically two phases with this. We can add sections to any list. And then with a grocery list, it'll add sections to it, to a, the list automatically. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with the first. We're just going to see how we add sections. And then I'll show you how the grocery list can do this automatically for us as well. So what we need to do is go into our Reminders app. So I go, let's see here, we'll just search for Reminders. You're going to see I have some sections there. Dairy, eggs, plant, produce, breads and cereals. I didn't add those. That's what these sections are. So I have here, um, we're just going to create a new list. Let's see, will this do it? Hardware list. And let's go and drag these out here. Come on. Oh, I'll just create a new one. Add list. And hardware 
2. So we know what it is. So it's just as of this point, it's just another list. There it is. I need hoses. I need grass seed. I need sprinklers. But on top of that, I also need screws and nails. So these are different sections, really, hardware, and then we also have um, gardening. So what we can do is add sections. Now, before we do that, you may think, well, we could have done that before. I mean, you can actually make subgroups. So I can add screws underneath or nails underneath screws. And that works pretty good. You can see that it almost creates a subgroup, and I can mark that whole list off of there. But when we add a section to it, it makes it really easy to add new items to it, and it makes it more bold. So to add sections, all we have to do is just go up to the More button here. And what you're going to see here is Add Section. So I'm going to add a gardening section. And now we're going to go and add one more, and we're just going to call this, um, we'll just call it Tools for lack of uh, better thinking. So I have my two sections there. So now what I de need to do is just move these to where they are. So grassy goes on there. Sprinklers go under there. Nails. And I don't have to use a section. You're going to see I still have a, this little area down here. If I have something that I need, it doesn't have to go into a section. I can just place it down here and it won't go into a section. But let's say I wanted to um, get something else. I need a new fountain for gardening. Well, what I can do is go right up over here and add something directly to that section. And then I can mark them off as I need them. We can close them. So we just go over to the little carrots here and we can close them. So that's the, uh, the new sections. And if you want to manage them, you can go back over to Manage Sections and you can edit them, change the names, anything like that. This and, is good for Saturday morning when you go to different stores. If you had like... Yeah. Or, right. Or and, you know, if you take this in combination with templates, now templates are nothing new, but, you know, if you really wanted to take this a step further, what, uh, what you can do is, let's just say this is for Menards. This is where they organize it. And um, Lowe's has a different organiza organization, and this works on the, the Mac and iPad as well. So you could set this up on a larger device, such as the iPad or the Mac, and then it'll carry over here. Um, what you can do is save this as a template, and let's just call this one Lowe's, and then every time you need a new list for Lowe's, you can just create a new list based off of that template. It's going to have all the same aisles and things like that. I think you saw my Christmas list problem. <laughs> Okay, good. Um, so that that's the new sections, and I think that that works really well. As you can see, you know, you have to set this up, and you can create sections for any list or anything like that. But what do we all have in our reminders? We all have a grocery list, or probably most of us have a grocery list in there. And grocery stores are organized pretty much the same way. All of the dairy is put together, all of the breads are put together, all of the alcohol is put together. Um, you know, so they could, you know, basically what you're able to do or what Apple is able to do is create these sections for it automatically. So let's go and do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another list and we're going to call this grocery. Because I have a few of them, I'm just going to call this two so we don't get it confused. And if I just hit done, I have my grocery list. So I can go in here and add a reminder. I need apples, I need oranges, I like bagels, and I do like my beer. Okay, so that's, that's kind of nice, but now I wanna have these in sections. Well, when you go back over to where you manage this list, so I just go over here to show list info. You're going to see that we have a list type. 
and it's under standard. This is the default. When I created this, this is what it goes to. But what I'm able to do is set this to a grocery list. Now, if you're in the UK, I think they call it something else. It might be shopping list. You know, just different terminology. And it kind of makes me wonder if they're going to have other types of lists, automatic lists down the road. Maybe they're using some AI for this. But basically, I'm going to convert this into a groceries list. So now when I do that, watch what happens. I just tap on done. And it went through and created those for me. And this will sync over to the iPad. It'll sync over to the Mac. So it basically just carries right on over. So now I need some wine. Actually, yeah, we'll go with wine. My wife likes wine. Um, we need uh, watermelon. So you can just go in here into these different sections. And if I go and add something else, so let's go with cheese. I need cheese. Wisconsin. Wisconsin cheese, exactly. And you can see it added dairy, eggs, and plant plant proteins in there. So I didn't have to create that section. So basically now I can go to that grocery store and go to those appropriate sections and everything's going to be arranged. Now, yeah. This is not shareable. If, um, I'm thinking Christmas and, you know, one person shopping for something, whatever, they can't check something off and you see it and go, okay, she got that or, or whatever. Right. It's not, this is not shared. So, nope. You can share this like any other list. But by default, it is not shared. So only you would have access to this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, each section could be a name, really, if, if, you, if you wanted, you know, for gifts and all that. Um, on top of that, what you're able to do is manage this outside of what Apple does. So let's say the store is arranged just a little bit differently or it's not catching a section. If you go up to the three dots, remember we could manage that those sections? There it is. I'm able to edit these sections. I can rearrange them. And what I can do is even add more sections. So, you know, Apple can get me started. iOS 17 can get me started. And then, um, you know, you can go and further fine tune it, I guess you could say. So that's the, uh, that's the grocery list or grocery sections. So I think it's, um, it's really nice. The last thing that they added, uh, big thing that they added, I should say, um, is column view. Now, I'm, I think the terminology I'm going to get right here is it's, if anybody's worked with project managers, they've probably seen um, Kanban, where it's like a column view. And then you can move things back and forth between those columns. Really useful in project type management scenarios. Well, they've added a column view. All it is is just switching to a view, but you're going to see that it really makes a little bit of a difference. I'm going to go to the list view here, and I'll show you what I mean. Oops. As a view. So this is what we're used to. So let's just say this is my project for Mac OS Sonoma. I need to record them. I need to edit them. I need to post them. Those are my three different states, I guess you could say, or status. And when I get done with one, I just drag it down to the other and it puts it over there. And that's just basically how we've worked with it in the past. And it works good. But the Kanban style is more of a column. So when I go to view as columns, watch what happens here. It is now columns. And even though it's a little smaller on the iPhone, if you were to see this on the iPad or the Mac, it really does work nice because it's just nice and wide. And what you're able to do is take these. Oh, I'm not, I didn't get the notes one in there. You just drag it over and place it over there. So you can just drag and drop between that column view. If I go to the side here, nope, it's not going to do it. All right. Um, so that's the, um, the column view. And you can do this with any list. So if you wanted to have your grocery list, you could do that as well. So here's my grocery list, view as columns. There's all my produce. There's all my dairy and eggs. And I just swipe over and just mark them off as I'm in that particular section. And that's just a simple up in the more, the three dots, view as list, and it goes back and forth. So. Oh. Okay. When you. Yep. I'm gonna. Mark I'm. Those, yeah. When you mark those off as being finished, 
But yet, like you want to, you get the carrots maybe every week or every other week. Do you have to go back and put it in, or is it you just? No. Um, so, so I just marked off okay. the carrots. So okay, yeah, let's say I'm out of let's say I'm out of carrots. This is the way that you would do it. I'm out of carrots now, so I need to add that back in. If you go up to the more button here, you're going to see show completed. And what I'm able to do. So you could pick it back up from the completed items instead of having to retype the whole thing. Again. Just okay. tap, just tap on it, and now what it'll do is it'll. Um, I'm going to I'm going to mute everyone here. So uh, um, if you have a question, just unmute yourself. Uh, um, so yes, Chris, all you have to do you're going to see that carrots is back in there. So basically, you just go to hide, show all completed. So, but with the show all completed, and this is nothing new. I think they changed how it works just a little bit. You used to have to pull down, and then you could see all of your completed items. So right now, what I'm looking at is just the items that are incomplete. When I go up to more here, oh, I got it backwards. So let's go up lettuce. It went automatically and hit it. Let's go with carrots. Automatically hit it. Now my produce is gone. What you can do if you always want to see even the ones that are complete, which might work good for a grocery list, what you can do is you can show your completed. It's going to show them, but you're going to show them as, uh, as that you have them. So now what you can do is you can just go back in and you're like, oh, I need more carrots, I need more lettuce. So you can really kind of use it. I guess I would say hide them by default. This is the way that I would do it. Hide them by default. And then you can just see what you need. And when you're getting ready to go grocery shopping, what I would do is I would go back over to show completed and mark off the uh, the things that you, unmark the things that you need. So does that make sense? That's, that's, what, I was, that's what I was wondering. I yep. had used that some of the time before on, on older ones. Okay, yep. thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any questions on uh, on the reminders? We're going to go to the next item. Uh, let's see here. It's, uh, oh, I do see a question here. So um, if you buy the same groceries, you, oh, you can also make it as a template. So yes, Ross is correct. What you can do is, Shopee List is my favorite. Oh, there's Steve, there's a Shopee List app for the Apple Watch. So um, basically what you're able to do is make a template of this, save it as a template, so grocery list, and anything that you have in that list will be saved in that template. So now it's kind of like a pre-filled, what I like to think of these as those, those old to-do lists where you rip them off, you know, but they're all pre-completed forms or whatever. So I'm able to save this as a template. And now I want to add another grocery list. I just go like that. We'll just call this one three. This is nothing new. And you're going to see that I ha now have a groceries three and it has the six items in there. So you can go and create a template as well. So, and that might work out well for different stores again. You know, each store has its own, uh, you know, sometimes you uh, like we'll go to Aldi for the uh, non-brand kind of things. And then uh, we do like to go to Meyer, our local um, store here. Well, not necessarily local, but um, they have, uh, you know, more brand, you know, kind of things. So uh, we'll go to Aldi first and then we go to Meyer for the stuff that we can't get at Aldi, you know, kind of thing. So you could have two different okay, lists. Okay, I was going to ask that because I was thinking the same thing where I live. Mm -hmm. stores always get things Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll have, you know, like um, I've tried all the pickles over at, uh, at Aldi and I'm not a huge fan of them. I like my Vlasic kosher pickles. Um, so, uh, you know, that's going to go on the Meyer list. That's not going to go on the Aldi list. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and let's see here. Any list also works uh, on the Apple Watch. Use the same show completed I. And I wonder if I, I don't use the app, the Reminders app on the Apple Watch, but I wonder if there's something with the um, with that as well. I'm going to start focusing a little bit more on the Apple Watch now that they got that nice little trick where I can easily show it. So, uh, all right, let um, let's take a look at notes. With notes, what they added was linking between notes. Now, we could always create a link in notes, but 
But now what we're able to do is link it to another node. And again, you can do this on the iPad and the iPhone, on the Mac as well. So it's essentially what we're able to do is create a quote unquote wiki. And then they added better PDF viewing with it. So let's go over to my notes and see what I mean. So I'm looking at my notes here and we're going to recreate this. I just did a presentation for the villages in Florida, so I was showing this off. So it actually worked out pretty good the way that I did it. So I have here a shopping list, restaurant, and then I also have a packing list. Let's go and unpin that. So these are my three, you know, let's say I'm traveling somewhere, and these are the three things that I that I want to keep track of. So what I'd like to do is actually have a master note and have that note, let's just say it's this one here, link back to these two. So really all I have to do is just pin this one and I'm able to access these two within that. That's what the note linking is. We can actually link between all these different notes. So the way that that works is we go into any one of the notes. I'm just going to go into the packing list here. And I need to create a link in here. So let's, um, let's go with shopping. That's going to be the name of it. I double click on it and I add a link. So I need to highlight it and add a link. Now all I need to do is, you're going to see that it says, enter the URL, this is nothing new, but over here we have the note title. So I'm going to type in here shopping. And you're going to see that it says link to note shopping list. Tap on it, hit done, and there it is. So now all I need to do is just tap on this shopping and it takes me over to the shopping list. So let's go with restaurants to eat at. So I just go in here and uh, we'll just go restaurants. Double tap. Add a link, and I'm just going to go eat. You can see it found it. Done. And now when I tap on restaurants, there's restaurants to eat at. And you're going to see that earlier I added a link back to shopping list. So I can tap on this, and it takes me back to my shopping list. And I can actually go in here and add another link that takes me back over to my packing list. So I can say packing. Double tap, add link, packing list, done. And now essentially what I'm able to do is tap on packing, it takes me over to packing, I go over to restaurants, take me to shopping list, packing, shopping. So you can you know, basically build interactivity between your notes, link one note to another. And I think this will be really helpful um, instead of keeping everything in one note, what you may want to do is categorize or you know separate some of these notes, but they may be, you could even build just a single note that says the table of contents. So if you're working on something, um, just have a note with a general description and then have a bunch of links below it that link to other notes. And then all you have to do is just open up that parent note. And in my case here, I don't care where these two are buried. These two are going to get buried. All I have to do is just tap on. Oh, I didn't pin it. So if I pin this, all I have to do is just tap on. I'm going, I want to take a look at my packing stuff. I just tap on that. And now I'm able to go to my other list. I don't have to search for them in this long list here and look for them. All I have to do is just tap on that and I can go and find uh, those lists. So the the packing or the uh, the linking between notes, I think, is going to be really really nice for people that use the um, notes app notes app extensively. I don't use it that extensively, but I really do like this. So, um, so, so you don't have to put like the pound sign mm -mm. And, and name it like we did before for mm -mm. searching. Nope. All you have to do is just type. So uh, you know, uh, link to a no. You know, you want to be more descriptive than what I am there. And then what you need to do is you just need to select it. That's probably the tricky part. You need to, what do you want to turn into a link? And then add a link 
And here, all you have to do is just type a, so I, I know I have a node on Ecamm, which is what I use to do all this stuff here. So I just type in Ecamm, and it's going to link to that node. And I can even go as far as use note title as name. So let's go ahead and do that. And I think it's going to, yeah, it changed the name. So now I can just tap on that, and uh, you don't have to. Uh, so I could do that here, too. Let's go ahead and edit link. Use a note title. Restaurants to eat at. So that's, that might be the better way to, so you don't even have to really type anything. You can just go blah, blah, blah. And when you link it, choose the use note title as name. And now it puts it in there. So you don't really have to type any. You have to type something to put a link in there. I don't think you're able to add a link. Let's see here. Oh, look at that. I don't even have to type a name. I can just go and add a link. Yes, the stinking rose, I saw that in the column, and there and now it puts that in there. So you don't even have to add a title to it. You know. okay. This might be a dumb question. Go for it. What's, what's the difference between a rich link and a raw URL? I believe... The, this totally yeah, well, this is what we're looking at here is uh, uh, what I would consider a rich link. You know, it has a little icon there. Um, rich, basically rich text is text that is bold, um, italicized. You know, it has some sort of formatting. That's what's called rich text. Raw text doesn't have any formatting at all. So in, uh, in a links case, um, it might just be a link. Now this does not have any, can I format this? I don't think I can format. So this would be raw, but yeah, it's, I don't think it pertains to the notes app at all. So. <laughs> okay. Cause I'd seen something about rich links and raw URL. I thought, what's the difference? Yeah. No. The one has to do with the formatting. Formatting. Mm -hmm. Rich text okay. links and yep. And then raw. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe like I missed it, but can you link like photos and other things in no, it only links to a note. It doesn't link to uh, stuff within a note. And you can't link it to uh, like a photo in the Photos app. Maybe that'll come next year. But all you can do is link it to a title of a note. So you can link it from one note to another. But that's it. And this does work across all the devices as well. So anything that I do here is going to be available on the iPad and the I uh, Mac as well. So. So you're saying the note has to have a title to it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the notes, all notes have a title to it. Um, the first, very first sentence is the title. Okay, that's what I thought. Yep. Right. So if I go and put a sentence above this, it's going to change the title. All notes have a title. It's all automatic. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that they added to it is uh, better PDF viewing. So with, uh, with PDFs, if you wanted to um, view a PDF in the Notes app, you actually had to open it up. Again, not too difficult, but what they really they really did something nice here. So I'm going to go to this one here. Oops, that's not a PDF. I need a PDF. That's, uh, here we go. This. So this here is a PDF, and you're going to see what I'm able to do. This is a multi-page PDF. You couldn't do this before. I can just swipe to look at that PDF. And of course, you can zoom in and zoom out, pinch to zoom. So, you know, this is pretty small. I'm not going to be able to read it, but you can zoom in. and But you don't have to open this up in a separate app anymore. On top of that, if you just wanted to view it as thumbnails, you can do that as well. You're going to see that. I have this little icon here above my cursor. And when I tap on that, I'm able to... So if you have a long PDF, you can put that into a note and basically just uh, swipe to view that entire PDF. Can you see more when you go horizontal? Yep, and if I, uh, not only can you see more, if you tap on this little carrot here, quick look. Looks like something from uh, the Mac right there. And now I'm able to, and of course I can zoom in and do all that kind of stuff. So 
really nice PDF viewer within the Notes app. So you can now put your PDFs in there. It's actually nicer than what it is in the Books app. And the Books app is made for PDFs. And I think this is really nice, especially when you can use this little guy here and you can view it as large, medium, small, um, and the quick look is really nice. Yeah, yeah, I assume that everything we're talking about today is the equivalent in the iPad. Yep. And some of the features, and you're talking about later, will be in Sonoma? Yeah, so this is exactly the same way on the iPad. Um, we'll just quickly switch over to the iPad here. And if I go to my notes, uh, let's see here, where is that one? There it is. You're going to see, let's go make this full screen. I have, you know, the exact same thing here. I can hide the thumbnails. I can click on the little carrot here. I can do a quick look. And, you know, this is really nice for viewing PDFs. Zoom in, zoom out, you know, that kind of thing. So, yes, on the Mac, it's not as nice, I'd say, ironically. Let's see here. If we open up my notes. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I'm. It looks like it is good. So I have all the same features here. Check that out. Didn't know that. So same thing. I sit corrected. There it is. So yeah, it is a feature feature uh, the same on all the devices, at least in that regard. So that's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what else do we have here? So that's the that those are my favorite features with the notes. Now let's take a look at messages. They did something uh, really nice with the messages app, and that is they redesigned the app tray, and they made a better search. So if I go over to my messages here, this is definitely a little different on the Mac. The Mac does not have the app tray like the iPad and the iPhone, but as far as the iPad and iPhone, it's equivalent. So if I uh, tap on one of these here, let's just go to uh, myself here. And if we look, we are, we're probably all familiar with this little button here. And what that would do is it would lift up. I can't show you anywhere because it's not available on the iOS 17, it would lift this up, and then we'd have all those little apps across the bottom. You recall that? And then we could select what we wanted to do with it. Well, those little apps were, first of all, they were little, and uh, you had to swipe to the left or right. I didn't find it very, uh, very useful. Um, I feel like I'm uh, going to be using the new app tray a lot more because when I tap on this little plus, instead of going horizontal and being small, it is now vertical and quite large. I like that. So I want to take a photo with my camera. I can just tap on camera. I want to add a photo from my Photos app. I tap on Photos. We have new stickers that we can create from live photos. Um, and when I swipe up, I get all of the other ones because you can download apps from the App Store for, you know, for the Messages app. So you can even get more apps in here. So it makes it really nice to go and add. There's my cable mess. Makes it really nice to uh, choose what you want to add to a message. Not big features in, in how it works, but just nicer in how you select them. Now, the other thing that they added to it was better search. So if I swipe down here, we have our search here. Now, this is nothing new. I type in here and I search what I'm going to, you know, what I want to search for. But we can actually have multiple searches in here. So I'm going to search for Beth. And you can see I have these different options here. So let's just go mess messages with Beth. But you know what? I'd also... There was a message that she sent me that is a link. Can I uh, filter out a link as well? You just go back up over here and 
you're going to see link because you're going to see there's a cursor there. What I'm able to do is tap on link. Or maybe it was a photo. Let's see all of the photos that Beth sent me. So I just go over to photo here. And now what it's going to do is it's going to show me all of the photos that Beth sent me. So I could go, Steve has sent me some stuff. So I go message with, with Steve. And let's say he sent me a link. Then I would go and tap on link. And I'd see all the links that I got from Steve. So we now have uh, multiple um, ways we can add multiple how did it, how do you word that we can add multiple search items or multiple things to search for within a search usually used to be just a single thing so I think that's going to be um, really nice really handy for finding things that people sent you know, we always uh, are looking for oh, I know Beth sent me that or I know my brother sent me that when was that and then all of a sudden you get all of his messages and 95% of my brother's messages are text. We just text each other. But every once in a while he'll send me a link and now I'll be able to filter that down. Now I know, you know, you may not know this, but what you also can do is just go up to the name here. And apparently Abigail didn't do anything. Let's go with here. If I tap on the name, I am able to see all of the photos and the links and documents as well so you can still do that so this is everything that i've collaborated with this is uh, all the photos that are in my messages that has been around um, for quite a few years and that hasn't changed but now what we are able to do if you wanted to search for something specific you are able to add multiple search items to um, what you're searching for so that uh, that's what's new with the messages, like I said, they did. Um, you can now make stickies out of uh, live photos. Um, let's see if that works. It's a little bit buggy, so I don't know if that's going to work yet. There's um, my friend's Rottweiler, so I tap on the plus, and we'll go with this one here. It's calculating. Add that as a sticker, and there's. I'm going to add an effect. We'll just go with comic. And now what I'm able to do is take this and move it up there. So there's more options for creating stickies. I can even go as far as a live photo. So here's Beth Dutch dancing. There she is. So I think that would be a cool sticker. If I don't add an effect, what this is going to be is a sticker of her. It should be, there she goes. Now she's kicking. It's over and over. Yeah, be careful, that, that sticker may be copyrighted. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so. I have a question uh, related to, kind of related to this. That, on the Mac, I can. Uh, we talked about this before a number of months ago. You can sign in with different people, right? On a Mac, on a MacBook. Correct. Yep. Mac. Yeah. So if, if I have a family computer and I have different people sign in, they're going to link with notes that. And only in their account. They can't link to anything outside of their account. Okay. So it's not transferable. So if. if okay. So. Nope. Yeah, it to link to the kids I have following. It's not going to work unless you... Correct. Decide. Yep. You got it. All right. Uh, so that is, uh, that's what's new with the, with the Messages app. Let's see here. What else do we have here? Oh, password sharing. This one, um, this one is actually really, really, I really uh, works surprisingly well. Uh, I, sh um, I haven't created a video on it. Um, I should, it works well. I think there's still a little couple things that are wrong with it, but um, I'm sure they'll fix that. But basically what, uh, what we now can do with our passwords is we can create, and I'm going to steal 1Password's um, terminology. For those of you that have 1Password or are not familiar with 1Password, what 1Password has is vaults. So I have a vault. This is where all my passwords are. And what I can do is I can create a separate vault for passwords that I want to share with Beth. And then I can create a separate vault for... Uh, passwords that I want to share with, let's just say, uh, with an organization. I do some stuff for NMUG, so maybe I want to, you know, share some passwords with, with NMUG that just pertain to them. 
Um, I could share passwords with Steve, uh, you know, things like that. So we just create these different, for lack of a better term, vaults. Well, we couldn't do that with Apple's uh, password manager. We could only do that. That's one of the many reasons why people went to 1Password. 1Password uh, um, is very popular and, and for good reason. But you no longer have to go to 1Password if you want to do this. The other thing that they changed with um, what they're introducing with 1Password, or I'm sorry, with uh, Apple's iCloud keychain or password keychain is uh, you will now be able to download an extension into Chrome on your Mac. You could do this with Windows already, but you can now do this on the Mac, at least from what I've read. Nobody's been able to get it to work properly yet. It's a little bit buggy from what I've read, but um, the, it's there, um, so they think that's just a matter of time. Essentially, what you're going to be able to do now is use Apple's iCloud password keychain, whatever your password manager even if you use Chrome, Brave, any Chromium browser. Before it was only a Safari, so if you use Chrome, you couldn't use Apple's password manager. You will now be able to with, um, with Mac OS Sonoma. But let's go back over to the iPhone here. When I go to my settings and we go over to passwords, got to read my face here, you're going to see that I have my passwords and work. So those are my two different vaults. I want to add a new vault. All I do is I just, it's a shared group. I should get that terminology. So I tap on the plus there. You're going to see shared group. So let's um, call this one Steve. And I would add people. I would type in Steve's email address. And then he would get an invitation. So you'd send it via email or however you, messages. You have to send an invitation. You're not sending the passwords yet. All you're doing is sending an invitation. So let's say Steve, I sent that over to Steve. What Steve would get in his password manager here is something, uh, my group name, Steve, and it would say pending. And then he would tap on it to accept it. Once he accepts it, we now have a shared group of passwords. Now, we haven't added any passwords into it yet, but at least we have that shared group. What you're able to do when you click on that group is you're able to manage it. Oops, that's not, oops, that's not, ooh, done, there we go. Um, is it the plus here? Here we go. So I go up, manage allows me to change the name and all that. If I go up to the plus here, so I'm in my work shared group and my work vault, tap on the plus, I can create a new password or I can move a password to that group or I can go and add more people. So let's say I wanted to share this with Tom Piper as well. I can go and add it. So then the three of us are using the same set of passwords. So when you go and move passwords to the group, you go and select it. So let's go with Adobe. What it's going to do is it's going to move it out of my personal shared group and move it into so there's moving it over reuse yep i know it's an old old password so um so now you're going to see that adobe is there and whoever i'm sharing this with let's just keep going with steve steve and tom would have access to that password they could change that password it is a it is a completely shared group now i can remove their access let's say that uh, Steve you know started talking about um, Aaron Rodgers a little too much and I just like oh, you know all right I'm done kind of thing I could actually revoke his access to that but he while he has access to it he is able to go and change all these use them it just works just like um, any other password manager that we're you know I'm in Safari I can type a password and it'll just pull it from there and when I go to my passwords here, you're going to see that Adobe is no longer there because it moves it. It doesn't copy it, it moves it. So if I wanted to move it back, I could do that as well. So I would go to my passwords here, and I want to move passwords to mine. So I go to Adobe, and now it's going to move it back over to 
mine and Steve and Tom or whoever else is part of this group would no longer have access to it. You can see it's back in my passwords and when I go to work it is no longer in that password, that shared group. So that's how the, uh, the, new, the new shared groups, not vaults, I need to work on that terminology. That's how the new shared groups, and this is again across all, it works basically the same way on the iPad and the iPhone. Anything that I do here will work across all the different devices. So, um, and no, I'm, I, I know better. I, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going, whoops, wrong one. Uh, Michael, I'm not going to show all my passwords. I know better than that. I know where these things, I've done this enough time now, so. But I'll show you. Uh, see, I do have, this is all my passwords. But if I go to, you do have to be careful with this. So I have a demo. This is just a dummy site. I am able to move my password from here as well, so I can go and find that password. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yep, there we go. So what I did is I went um, and looked at, uh, I have a demo password account, so I could actually show my password for that. And that is, uh, we'll just go to demo.com. And if I wanted to move this to a different group, I can move it to a different group, so I can actually go into that password, move it to a different group. And if you did want to see the password, I can just tap on this, and there's the password. The worst password there possibly is. Hey, you, oh yeah, you can't, it does hide it. Look at that. So no, you can't even see it. Not even if I tried to. On my phone, it does say what the password is. So, which is password. But, so I can't even, with shared screen, I can't even show those passwords. That's good. So that's the, uh, that's the shared password thing. And I think that's going to be really, really nice um, for, uh, you know, families and things like that. And I plan on using it a little bit more. Um, and so, so, you know, I, I mentioned last, last meeting, was, you know, I'm a widower now. And my best friend is in Dallas. Um, he's my closest friend. This is something I would want him to have if something happened to me. Now, if he gets into it, he's a Mac person, too. We have a, would it go into his passwords and he'll be able to see a website and hit the touch button on the keyboard and it'll bring up my 401k and whatever? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, if you have tooth factor authentication, you might have a little problem with that, you know. But yes, it, it's at least the username and password is going to be correct. Yep. It's just a matter of can he get in after that? You know, I don't know, you know. So, but yeah, yep. Mm hmm. All right, let's see here. What do I have next? All right, Safari profiles. This one, um, I, a friend introduced me who I used to work with over at Apple, and he uses uh, Microsoft Edge, Chromium browser. And he showed me a few years ago how uh, it has profiles. And now I'm a Safari user, so I never knew about these, but I guess they've been around for, for quite a while. And basically what you're able to do with profiles, it's almost like you have... Um, a separate browser. Um, you can do this with Google Chrome, Brave, Edge. Um, I believe DuckDuckGo does it, but you never, you couldn't do this with Safari. So probably the best way of showing you, I'm just going to show you on my Mac and then I'll show you how it works on the iPhone just so we can get a better idea. So I'm on my Mac here and when I go to Safari, you're going to see that it says personal here. I could log into um, YouTube with my personal account here and do what I need to do. And let's say I wanted to log into YouTube with uh, my, my, my dance tutorials account. Well, normally what you would do or what I've done in the past is I would open up a new private window and then you go into there. But the problem with a private window is I want to remember the history of where I've been. Um, you know, private window just kind of hides everything. I don't, I'm not trying to be private with this. I just want to be logged in to the same site with two different accounts. That's what I want to do. Or maybe what I'd like to do is log into my account under, an, uh, you know, my dance tutorials as the administrator. Maybe I'm having a problem with it. So I got to log in with the administrator. But then I also want to log in as a test user. So then as I make changes, 
Now you can do this with separate browsers and you know this is how we've done it in the past but essentially with profiles what we can do is we can create different profiles for different things. So I could if I was still at the school I'd be able to create a profile for the school and it would have all of my websites and everything that I work with on the school. Then I have my production, my, my work stuff, and then I could have a personal profile. So essentially, to go to a different, I'm gonna go with a new window here, and I'm gonna to go to Dance Tutorials, and you can see that I made it blue, so I can actually see this one is for Dance Tutorials, and it has the little graduation cap. This one is personal, and then I also created one for NMUG so I could, because I'm redoing their site, and there's the NMUG site. Now, NMUG looks exactly like my personal, so that doesn't really help me out. How do I know which one I'm on? I mean, I don't have to, uh, I mean, I can look up here in the corner, but to manage our profiles, what we do is we go to our Safari settings, our preferences, and you're going to see we have profiles here. This is a new tab. And what I'm able to do is change. They are green. And they have a palm tree. Let's go with Naples. So Naples, Florida. Or we have sun or anything. Uh, we'll just go with that one. And now when I look at my browsers, I can see this one is for dance tutorials. This one is my personal account or and mug, sorry, and this one is my personal account. So what I'm able to do is log into my personal YouTube so I can see what I'm subscribing to and view videos that, I've, that I want to watch and this, that, and the other, stuff that I don't want to associate with my work, my dance tutorials YouTube. But now I want to manage my dance tutorials YouTube account. I don't have to log out. All I have to do is just go over to this window here, log in, and I can go and manage that YouTube account. I can go and create new windows. I'm still in Dan's Tutorials. It's just another browser, not private browsing or anything like that. But now you know what I got to do? I got to go over to NMUG and, and upload a video to their YouTube. So I just go over here to NMUG and I can log into YouTube here and essentially just uh, work on the YouTube and their account. And I can switch between this all within Safari. And again, it's not private browsing. It uses its own set of cookies, um, but it is not private browsing or anything like that. They do share bookmarks, so you're not going to be able to keep a separate bookmark in each one. It's not a completely separate, but it is really nice for scenarios like where you need to log into sites using different things. If you're using QuickBooks, um, you could have you know, a profile for uh, you know one QuickBooks and a profile for, you know, something else, you know, personal QuickBooks, you know, anything like that, really. Yeah, how, how does this work with, uh, this is more of a Mac thing, but how does this work? I have different desktops, one for work and one for personal, and I just... Well, you could do that. You could just go and, so you could move that one over there. Move that one over there. So now... Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, how that works on the iPhone, so that's basically how profiles work. And on the iPhone, what we need to do, we have the same, same kind of thing. What we need to do is tap on. Where did it go? Yeah, let me pick up my phone here. When we tap on these two squares to get to all of our tabs, you're going to see down here I have this little silhouette, this little dude. That means I'm in my personal profile. I tap on it and what I can do is I can go to any one of these profiles. So I go to Dan's Tutorials. Now I'm looking at Dan's Tutorials. I'm in that particular tab or that particular profile. And let's say I wanted to go to NMUG. Now I'm at NMUG. I can go and create a new page and it's all going to stay within NMUG. So all these. So it just makes it a little bit easier to, it's a little clunky on the iPhone, but that's just because of the size. Um, but it is going to be nice um, 
I thought that was really cool when my when my friend uh, Matt showed me how that all worked. I'm like, oh man! But I'm a Safari user, and I didn't want to switch over to Chrome, so I couldn't uh, I couldn't use it. I did use Edge for a little bit, um, but I still prefer Safari if I can. Well, now I'll be able to use some of those features with that. So that's uh, that's profiles, and I'll have more extensive. The profiles still seems to be a little bit buggy, so I haven't recorded a video on that. But I plan on recording videos for all of these. Um, in the future so all right what do we have next all right. oh mental health and uh, that's on the ipad i got the wrong so on the ipad they added the health app this will be good for kevin um, the health app is uh, an app that's on the iphone and it was only on the iphone now it's on the ipad as well and you're going to be able to access it from the ipad oh i know why i put it on there mental health Ugh. Yes. So here's my health app. And when we go over to all of my different categories here, you're going to see we have mental well-being. And essentially what we're able to do is track our emotions and moods. So you can get in here and start logging and then basically, as you do this on a daily basis, it is all private. Apple doesn't have access to this. It doesn't share it with anything except your other devices, and it's all encrypted, so we don't have to worry about it, you know, um, sharing information or anything like that. But the nice thing about this is, is if you log this, after a while, what you're going to see, hopefully, are trends. So here we can see different, I don't have any data in here, but you know, you're basically what you're going to be able to see as trends. And what you could do is go to the doctor and show them this, and then maybe they could do something with it. So Apple's really getting into the health game, and it's nice to see them bring the uh, mental health, you know, elevate that as well. And this is one way that you could just track how things are going and all that and, uh, you know, pick out trends. So we can actually... You can't, you can't share, I guess maybe... Spouses might want to do this, um, but you can't, like in the, in the activity, I share all my exercise with my friend Stephen Dallas. I can't share my health stuff. With I don't think so. I mean, maybe by default, you it's certainly not on by default, but maybe you could. I haven't played around with it that much. Um, but uh, well, here, let's, let's just go and start. You can send information to your doctor, or you can do some limited stuff, but you can't, he can't, I can't share my mental health with him or anything like that. It's all private. Let's see, let's see peaceful. Uh, biggest impact on you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, done. Logged. Um, I'm going to skip reminders. And so now I'm, so you can see it, I can show in charts and all that. Let's see if we have something in sharing. Show all data, options during the day. Nope, it doesn't look like it as of right now. So I don't see anything in where you can share it as of right now. So um, the last thing I have here is we can personalize our uh, contacts. And what I mean by that is you can set what is shown um, when someone, when you call someone. So if I got that right, yeah, when you call someone. So basically, if I go into my contacts here, I believe this is where it's at. So share your name and photo with friends. So this is going to choose how I appear um, when I communicate with my friends. So you're going to see that's the, the call when if uh, if someone if I call someone that's what they're going to see, so what I'm able to do is customize that. So let's go ahead and continue here, and you're going to see that I can enter my name. I can go and put a photo in there. Let's go with the emoji. Um, we'll go with that one and continue. Crop it. That's fine. So now basically with this, when um, cancel. Yeah, yeah. You're good now. Okay. So basically now what you're able to do, my phone number is showing there. 
um, basically what you're able to do is set what is shown on your screen when you call someone. So they're going to see what you want to, instead of them saying, I believe they can still over, override it, but, uh, you know, you can put pictures in there. You can do whatever you want. You know, my, um, my brother is a crazy cat person, much like what Beth and I are, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he puts one of his cats on there. So when I call him, I'm going to see his cat. wouldn't surprise me at all. So, but that's what he's going to be able to do. So. I can't help but notice you have uh, Tim Cook up there. Do you call him often? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish. I wish. So, um, so that's basically uh, what, uh, what some of my favorite new features with iOS 17. So you all know who I am, so I'm just going to skip by this, but I am going to put this out live. So um, if anyone is still watching this down the road, um, Use a coupon code SAVE25 and they could save 25% off of uh, any one of my plans. So, but basically, that's, uh, that's what I got. So, thank you very much. Any other questions? Hey, Ann, can you watch you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. When you did about the profiles of Safari and you said that, the, uh, that each site moves over from one, from one profile to another, you have the same list. Can you delete? The, the list certain sites in one list so that you don't have all of them i tried that and it didn't work thank you very much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so I have, I have a question. yeah Do you use the um uh apple wallet app on an ipad did they add that yeah it's you have to buy it it's like a couple bucks uh, that would, probably wouldn't be Apple then, but let me see here. Wallet. I'm not familiar with that. App, wallet and Apple Pay. Let's go over to my iPad here. Wallet and Apple Pay. Let's just see what we got here. Um, didn't say anything about it. I don't think it has the wallet. I'm going to look into that. I did not, uh, I'm not familiar with that at all, so I didn't realize. I'll look into that. Oh. The, reason, the reason I ask is I am hard of seeing, so right. a bigger app would be better. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's why I like the iPad. That's why I buy a bigger phone and a bigger watch. This is not my, my other watch. The, I do have an Ultimate. It's not that I'm a diver or anything like that. I'm blind, you know, so I'm, it's just nice to see that bigger, bigger, bigger watch. Um, so uh, Ross also said, um, and I didn't, I didn't get into this because I haven't quite figured out, they also have a uh, um, name drop uh, where you're going to be able to, like the old bump, where you're going to be able to uh, put your phone next to someone else and then you'll be able to transfer contact. So that is really, uh, I think that's going to be nice, you know, eventually when everyone knows how it all works and all that. Um, and the other thing that they did is they changed the typing and they're using a lot more AI with typing. So it's a lot smarter. I personally haven't noticed it too much so I, I need to figure out if i if there's a setting that i have turned on or off it it seems to work but it's not as working as good as what apple is saying all right um with that i, I just have one other question yeah go for okay, it you were talking, I, I use safari but yet i use my search engine as deck, deck go it's yeah that's fine safari, yep right? okay. yeah okay yeah. i just wanted to make it has, sure has nothing to do with the search engine per se it's just different profiles yep mm-hmm Completely outside of that. Mm -hmm. um, next week, I will be having one of my standard AMAs. Ask me anything. So um, you want to check uh, that out, sign up for that. And uh, yeah, outside of that, thank you once again for your support. And uh, your, uh, yeah, thanks. When is the release of uh, mid-September? Release. Yeah, so the rumor is, um, you know, Apple usually doesn't announce it till about a week or two before they... Uh, before the actual announcement, but uh, the rumor is I think it's like September, second week in September, and that's typical of them. So iOS 17 and iPad OS 17 are probably going to be released next month and four weeks. It would not surprise me. In fact, I'd be surprised if it didn't, based on what I've read. Um, and, you know, Mac OS Sonoma, I'm, I would not be surprised. Usually, sometimes that can wait until December, but man, has it been stable. Um, it really has been good, and uh, it works well. And I'll just, and I know we're talking about the iPhone, but, uh, you know, I, I love this little, this is a screensaver. 
and when I unlock, my computer is locked right now. So when I go and unlock it, and I'm just going to go and hold my uh, finger over top of the fingerprint sensor or whatever, this is going to turn into my desktop. So I just unlock it. Yeah. And you can see it in the back there, just slowly, and that's my new desktop. The, I just uh, love it. iOS 17 on the iPad. Yeah. Uh, too. Yeah. So, and, and that's what I really, so I, back at the very beginning, you know, what, you know, what do I think about these? I really like iOS 17, iPad OS 17, and Mac OS Sonoma. I think they're, they're well done. I haven't had a lot of issues with them. I love the features that they've added. They haven't added too many. They haven't made too many drastic changes. Um, and it's just worked out really, really well. Now, saying that, well, this guy is... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the struggle bus with this one here. Um, and I'll get used to it. It's muscle memory. We no longer yeah. swipe. We no longer swipe up to get to the control center. We use the side button. I did use favorites. So now I can't find anywhere where there's no, you know, there's no more favorites, you know. So things change just a little bit. And uh, I got to, I got to wrap my head around yeah, how all that works. Yeah, widgets, yeah, yeah. Yep. It does have widgets. And that's, maybe that's what I need to do is more developers have to come up with widgets and things like that, so, yeah.